Euro Football Weekly is sponsored by Betfair. I'm your host, Natalie Rydstrom. The English Premier League season is in the books, but it's never too early to have a look at next year's betting odds. Here with us now to discuss the early value is SPR Forum contributor Mike Richardson. Mike, thanks for joining us. Hi, Natalie. First of all, how did you make out in the English Premier League season? Or rather, how many shoes did you manage to buy, Mrs Richardson? Well, Natalie, I did pretty well, but not quite as good as my wife did. Uh, I won a fair bit of money, but my wife made an awful lot of um, shoes out of my Premier League betting. The thing was, it worked out to be about 17 and a half pairs of new shoes for her. But Mrs Richardson being Mrs Richardson, she always rounded up, so she got 18. But yeah, what? it was a very good season for us both. 18 pairs of shoes. I think you need a new wardrobe, don't you, to house those? <laughs> yeah, we're building an extension. <laughs> good, good. OK, as far as the top four stand, did you predict that or were you expecting to see another top four? Yeah, I think like a lot of people, I had the same top four. Uh, the only thing that was really worth betting on and betting on the futures of was a different order. Uh, it was clearly going to be another Manchester season, whether it's going to be United or City, that was almost a coin toss. And clearly it went one way from quite early on. Arsenal did what Arsenal seemed to always do these days and forced their way back into the Champions League place. Uh, and Chelsea, yeah, they're good enough to finish in the top three or the top four. Uh, the only real surprise was just Tottenham almost taking it to the last day. So, yeah, no real surprise in the top four and not that much of a surprise in the order, to be honest. Right. And what about the three teams cast out of the Premier League? Were you sad or surprised to see QPR, Reading and Wigan leave? Now, I don't think there's much of a surprise there. I was calling Wigan to go down for an awfully long time. Rudding, I held out hopes for because one of my friends supports them. And QPR, I think it was too little, too late. Not even Harry Houdini could have kept them up. So, yeah, no real surprise at the bottom. But again, Wigan made valiant effort of it and tried to keep it exciting right to the last day. That's right, they certainly did. Now, Cardiff City, Hull City and Crystal Palace will be promoted to the Premier League next season. What can we expect from these teams? Uh, I think there could well be a surprise in the cards, Natalie. Uh, one of the things that last season showed is that there are an awful lot of teams that almost seem to be fighting to go down. And I think it's only because Reading and QPR and Wigan were so poor that uh, a few teams survived. Sunderland are definitely contenders for relegation. Uh, I think Aston Villa are contenders for relegation. Newcastle, anything can happen with them. Uh, and if one of those teams goes down, that means you're the Hull or Cardiff or Crystal Palace will be staying up. So think of the three sides that have come up. One of them is going to cause a surprise and one of them is going to stay up. Hull, they've got a bit of history. Crystal Palace, they've got plenty of history in Cardiff. Well, they've got the pride of Wales behind them. I think one of them is going to be surprising. Uh -huh. Now, all three teams are also the top three to be favoured to be relegated at the end of next season. Crystal Palace is the favourite, priced at 1.44, followed by Hull, priced at 1.66, and then Cardiff, 2.5, all odds supplied by Bet365. Now, do you think that's a fair bet? Yeah, I think that pretty much relates how they finished last season. Uh, it's a stronger team, are more likely to stay up. And Crystal Palace, although they had a wonderful turn at Wembley, uh, winning uh, promotion like they did, they're still the one that made it up uh, almost through the back door. So, yeah, I don't blame the bookies for putting them as favourites to go down. However, I think at this stage, you know, nobody would begrudge you having a cheeky little bit on any one of them to stay up. But I think Cardiff, Pride of Wales, yeah, they could cause a real upset. All right. Now, let's move up to the top of the table and look at which four teams will end up in the top four. Bookies have in this order Man U, Man City, Chelsea and Arsenal. Now, do you agree with the bookies or perhaps could Tottenham enter the top four? Uh, after all, they did miss their slot by one point. Well, Natalie, I'm feeling a wee bit schizophrenic about this one. I think Man United, Man City, Chelsea and Arsenal are always your classic top four. They're like some form of four uh, musketeers always running around at the top of the Premier League. However, I think a shake-up is on the cards. Man United, new manager. It's gone beyond Fergie time into Moyes time. Uh, Man City, almost anything can happen. Chelsea, the special one coming back. And Arsenal, almost worth a bad run. Um, if any team's going to crack into the top four, out of that top four, it's going to be Tottenham. And I think we could see one team slipping up. So, yeah, have a cheeky little bet on Tottenham cracking the top four. But I don't think it's worth betting on Tottenham finishing anything higher than fourth. OK, now the question is, is whether Gareth Bale, um, after his outstanding Premier League season, will leave the Spurs and could this affect their chance to end up in the top four? Well, I think Spurs without Gareth Bale is probably missing a couple of spikes. Uh, will he leave? Well, he said he's going to stay, so that could mean absolutely anything at all. Any team in the Premier League would want to have him, I think, uh, including Tottenham, of course. But they haven't necessarily got the money and they haven't got Champions League. Yeah, I can't see him going to Arsenal. I can't see him going to Chelsea. Manchester City might throw some money his way. But, um, 
yeah, it's, it barely leaves Spurs better against Spurs. OK. Now, it's no surprise to see Manchester United are the sportsbook favourites to win the Premier League next season, currently priced at 2.87 with Bet365. Do you think that Manchester United's performance next year will be hindered by Sir Alex Ferguson's resignation, or do you think they've got this one? Uh, well, the simple answer is Man United without Alex Ferguson never going to be as good as Man United with Alex Ferguson. But then again, I think any team with Alex Ferguson is always going to be better. Uh, I think the biggest problem for David Moyes taking over is like, how do you follow an act like that? And the simple answer is you can't. I think the fans will give him at least one season to find his feet. Uh, the players will at least give him one season to find his style of management. But it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. Man United finished um, outside the top two. And dare I whisper it, outside the top four. So yeah, if you want to make some interesting money, bet against Man United. But then again, you're going to get good odds for that. And you're going to get good odds for a reason. Manchester City is listed at 3.25. What do you make of their chances? Uh, they beat Man U in April 2-1 at Old Trafford. Can they steal the trophy from them next season? Uh, yes, they can, but whether they will is going to be a whole different matter. I think last season, after they were defending champions, you would have thought that would be the time when they should have pushed on forward. But they didn't, uh, and Man United did the boring, typical Man United thing, just ground out victory after victory after victory, and they took that title back. Um, there's probably never been a better time to play Man United uh, in the league, and there's probably been never been a better time to try and steal a title off them. Man City, I don't think they're the favourites, though. Uh, Chelsea, with a special one coming back, and Arsenal being due a good run of form. Yeah, I think there's going to be a very much a four-horse race for the top of the title this year. Um, yeah, and Man City are just one of them. Yeah. Now, Europa League winners Chelsea are currently offered at 3.5 to lift the Premier League trophy. Do you see this number getting much bigger? Uh, no, I think that number's only going to go down. Uh, Jose Mourinho coming back. Um, new signings, new money, new blood. I think the odds on Chelsea are only going to get worse from a bookie's point, from a, a punter's point of view. So if you want to bet on Chelsea, bet early. But I still think mm, it's still a risky one. Yeah, I think I'm with you on that one. Now, before we wrap up the show, are there any other bets that look appealing to you at this point? What will you be watching for? Well, it depends how rich you want to get. If you want to go a little bit crazy, why not bet on a wild horse like Liverpool or even Newcastle United to make it into the top four? Both of those have got really nice, big, fat odds. Uh, and you can make a tidy profit and get some new shoes for your wife if you're that way inclined. Um, other than that, other end of the table, Newcastle, Aston Villa, Sunderland, Fulham, there I said. There's a lot of teams that could slip down and could get caught out. Norwich uh, are another one that only made it through thanks to a couple of good games at the end of last season. So, yeah, look to the wild cards for the top and there's quite a big pack of wild cards for the bottom. Plenty to bet on, Natalie. All right, Mike, thanks for joining us.